welcome back to Wednesday in the Word. And we're staying right here with learning more about Babylon and her influence on the earth as we get into chapter 18. And just a quick point of reference, you know, in Revelation 16, the bowls were poured out. God says, this is officially starting my wrath. But the first four bowls really were things that fell upon the earth. They were those judgment. And the fixed, sixth and seventh seals get us into truly the end of evil on the earth as we have known it. Something that truly the Christians have cried out for for years. Now, we don't have a lot of detail or sense of time between the end of the trumpet judgments and when these final bowls occur, right? God doesn't talk a lot about that. And timing is one of the things he says is a mystery left for him to reveal. But we are seeing certain details about Revelation 17 and 18 that helps us see that the beast has already claimed his throne. The Antichrist is already calling himself a God and having ultimate control. And he's instituted that mark to buy and sell. How do we know this? Because with the first bowl, the sores afflicted those who had accepted that mark of the beast to buy and sell. So there's a period of time where that was the challenge before mankind to decide who they would serve. Now, these details of 17 and 18, as we go into 19, they really are providing us a full visual of how the of the beast seat comes about and how Armageddon takes place. So this is really filling in and giving the information for the earth to be utterly shaken and us to start fresh with a new heaven and a new earth, which is how Revelation concludes. Now, before getting deeply into this next set, because we just learned about Babylon, well, Revelation 17 showed you that Rev, uh, Babylon rode on the back of the beast, right? Babylon had her rise to power on the beast, on evil influence, on the enemy's throne, wanting to position her to bring this corruption, this unfaithfulness, this perversion to the earth. So in Revelation 17, we saw really the rise of false religions, all that were meant to keep man from the one true living God. But also Babylon had that role of providing consequences to Israel for their unfaithfulness to their God, because God was the God of Israel. And so the consequences for her, for turning aside. But we've seen throughout that Babylon's role was even much bigger and larger than the religion, even though everything was tied to unfaithfulness. She enticed man away from God in other ways as well. And this is where we're going to see both Middle East religion and commerce talked about in Revelations 18. It says, after this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice, he shouted, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every unpure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. So we know that she had that cup of abominations that she poured out. And there was a choice to drink, to take uh, what she was offering in terms of religion and faith, but also now in terms of commerce. Notice it says the kings of the earth committed adultery with her, not just Israel. And it was that the merchants grew rich from her excessive luxuries. So there's a relationship that most countries have with the Middle East that has to do with oil and natural resources and global trade. As a matter of fact, I just want to remind you what scripture has said throughout and where 
Babylon is right there in the middle of Iraq. And we've been told since the beginning of time, you cannot serve both God and mammon, right? And mammon is wealth regarded as an evil influence or a false object in worship devotion. So there's no issue with earning money, but chasing wealth, making economic decisions that compromise the soul and one's values. And you hear about that debate going on all the time, right? And whether a man can obtain all the wealth of the world, but yet still lose his soul. And that is definitely a Babylonian influence to chase that wealth. And oil is one of the main reasons that nations that people consider godly get involved in the Middle East. Yes, we have some oil here in the U.S., but we use far more than we produce, which is why we have been involved in the Middle East and we keep our trade relations open so that we can have all the things that we want to have to live off of here in the U.S. Now, if you remember when the seals were broken back in uh, revelations. We already covered these, but I want you to think about what happened. They were broken to position the earth for this time in history. Matthew 24 calls it as contractions leading to birth, the pains of getting us ready to birth forth the very end times. And this is what happened when the lamb opened the second seal. I heard the second living creature say, come, then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. We know how much combat and war there has been in the Middle East. And a lot of that fighting is mixed <laughs> together in whoever controls that area. And the reason we've shown that the U.S. and others have had troops in that area trying to keep that peace because the war then has an influence over who has good relationships and who will share the natural resources that we need uh, for the rest of the world to live. And when the lamb opened, it says in verse five, the third seal, I heard the living creature say, Come, I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, two pounds of wheat for a day's wages and six pounds of barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil in the wine. That pair of scales, there is truly a trade balance and imbalance going on across the earth. And sometimes people have talked about the black horse just in terms of famine, but notice this is about price setting. It's what is the value that it takes for us to eat? How do we get the wheat and the barley and those food sources? And what's the cost of that? But he also says, hey, don't damage the oil and the wine. Keep the production of those things going. Why? Because they are ultimately important to the end time. And they are what have positioned the region of the Middle East and everyone's engagement with the Middle East and Babylon's ability to entice people to do business with the Middle East for the oil and for the wine. This is just a quick graph to kind of demonstrate where we're talking about the U.S. when they call it a trade deficit. We spend 40 billion more dollars in the Middle East and North African countries. That means we buy more from them. And most of that is oil and gas exports. So Libya, Kuwait, Iraq, Oman, Saudi Arabia, Algeria, Iran. These are all examples of the countries where we are receiving great amount of oil for them and we stay in relationship with them no matter how they treat their people for that oil. Now the agricultural trade balance is an imbalance where those countries are more reliant on chicken and farming and food stuff that we send their way. Now there's, there's other things, there's technology, there's manufacturing, there's cars, but these are two big areas where we can see we're sending them food, but they're sending us back oil at a much greater cost. We are in a deep global trading relationship with the countries that are traditionally of Babylon.
So there is truly a balance of power going on in a shift of power and conflict around that power in the Middle East. So the first chart there, you see Saudi Arabia, they have followings that are also in that yellow and they align with them. And then you have Iran in the blue and there are countries that are um, deeply aligned and more of those greens that are tied with them. But you have Iraq right there where Babylon, who's who's leaning towards Iran, but that's contested and leaning at different times to Saudi Arabia. So the nature of that being land in between the major power players, Turkey, Iran, Saudi Arabia, those are those on the right who are the power players. And we have worked hard to try to keep Iraq neutral, which they are not necessarily fans of us, but because we pump so much money into that area, they are keeping the balance. And oil is the main reason we are keeping that power balance in the Middle East. So we continue with the scripture. Then I hear another voice from heaven say, come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done. Pour her a double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit enthroned as queen. I am not a widow. I will never mourn. Now we understand the wealth in the U.S. There is wealth. It is much more centralized, but it is happening in all those nations in the Babylonian Empire area in the Middle East. And truly, we know already God with the earthquake, the wrath of the Lamb earthquake back at the sixth hill, had called those who would know and understand what was happening out of the area to go to the mountains and recognize where they were in time and to start that process of realizing that their Messiah has come so that they can turn to Christ. And ultimately, Babylon is coming back and going to rise in power through the rise of the beast and the antichrist we saw that he becomes that final head of this area but also what is proclaimed in scriptural and what is being declared right now is the fall of that and truly israel god's people need to be pulled up and out of the area before this wrath happens it says therefore in one day her plagues will overtake her death mourning and famine. She will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. We know that within her, those bowls are taking place, the death, the mourning, the famine. It says those plagues, right, become overcoming upon Babylon as soon as he starts pulling out those bowls. And then there is a fire that consumes that city. Now, when the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her and shared her luxury see the smoke of her burning, they will weep and mourn over her. Terrified at her torment, they will stand far off and cry, woe, woe to you, great city, you mighty city of Babylon. In one hour, your doom has come. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. Cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth, every sort of citron wood and articles of every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cargoes of cinnamon and spice, of incense, myrrh, and frankincense, of wine and olive oil, of fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages, and human beings sold as slaves. This declaration is twofold because as we've said all through revelation god was always talking about what was what is and what is to come babylon was a great city and truly all these types of trades came through her down the euphrates and out the persian gulf 
and everyone traded because they could get the most money from her and from others to make that the trade capital. Now we know that Babylon, the city, fell when the Medo-Persia Empire came in, but that spiritual influence to continue to make sure that the enemy's camp held control of that oil and people continue today. So we know there's this ending in this burning that comes of the reestablished Babylon that is an is to come as well that is being declared here and truly everyone who received all aid all of the natural resources from Babylon and the 10 king council during the tribulation period because they controlled all the natural resources will truly mourn right because if they were buying and selling exclusively with the beast all of that access and all of that goes away when Babylon is fallen. They will say the fruit you long for is gone from you. All your luxury and splendor have vanished, never to be recovered. And Babylon was collecting all sorts of ware, but also all the food and good that came in trade for the oil. The merchants who sold these things and gained their wealth from her will stand far off terrified at her torment. They will weep and mourn and cry out, woe, woe to you, great city, dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. Truly, Babylon will be the empire of mammon, has been in the past and will ultimately be at the end time when there is exclusive control of buying and selling. Every sea captain and all who travel by ship, the sailors and all who earn their living from the sea will stand far off. When they see the smoke of her burning, they will exclaim, was there ever a city like this great city? They will throw dust on their heads and with weeping and mourning cry out, woe, woe to you, great city, where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth. In one hour, she has been brought to ruin. Rejoice over her, you heavens. Rejoice, you people of God. Rejoice, apostles and prophets, for God has judged her with the judgment she imposed on you. Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, with such violence, the great city of Babylon will be thrown down, never to be found again. The music of harpists and musicians, pipers and trumpeters will never be heard in you again. No worker of any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a millstone will never be heard in you again. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. Your merchants were the world's important people. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. In her was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people, of all who have been slaughtered on the earth. Yeah. Nations, kings continue to do business with a country, with a nation, and with a region that has hated and killed God's people. The prophets proclaim time and time again across all that region, right? God's judgment and what would be to come and who the one true living God. And Daniel uh, pronounced that and proved God's reign by his faithfulness before King Darius. And yet everyone keeps turning again and be so occupied with the earning of the wealth compared to the service and recognition of the, the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Now, if you look at this, interesting, I just wanted to show, you can see Saudi Arabia over there on the left in the yellow. So then you go straight up to the green and there's Iraq and Baghdad. So we know that Babylon is in that area. Now he's, 
condemning Babylon for having killed God's people and for being the uh, area that entices everyone to do trade and business. And basically, when you use the prostitute terms, get in bed with Babylon. Iraq is 99, 98% Muslim, and you are born Muslim and immediately registered Muslim. So there is no room for Christianity there. They have decided they are serving an Allah. And so that is the religion that is controlling Iraq and the Babylon Babylonian Empire right now now. But what I wanted to show you is the stars that are all around it. And those are the top 10 countries in the world for persecutions of Christians in 2019. Way over to the far right and brown is North Korea. Very small population of Christianity, 1.7, but you are they are the top for persecuting and killing any who proclaim their faith. You have Afghanistan, which is 99.7% Muslim. They're an Islamic nation. Somalia is Islamic. Libya is Islamic. Pakistan is Islamic. Uh, you have Sudan, Islamic. You have uh, Yemen. You have Iran. They are all Islamic Muslim nations. India is primarily Hindu and then Muslim as well. When Christianity and those of us who proclaim Christ are pulled from this earth, you can definitely see that the Islamic control over the whole area will fill that in and that that uh, Babylonian declaration for Allah is what is going to be the force during tribulation until you get to the point where uh, the Muslims are going to be confronted by the Antichrist declaring himself a god. And that will be where Babylon uh, is going to come to its end because the faith associated with Babylon will not align with Satan declaring himself a king, the Antichrist wanting to sit on the throne and require everyone to worship only him. Many people don't even think about the faith and spiritual dynamics related to this, but the commerce, the commerce, the trades, the wealth, the access to resources is why really wealth keeps being fed in to the Middle East and so much power and control will be there when we enter in to the end times. Amen. I hopefully you are blessed. Hopefully this gives you lots to think about into research for yourself. <laughs> Do a Bible search on Babylon. Go in, read what God is declaring about who she is, why she existed, and she truly has been an enticement to mankind that we have to recognize can never be promoted as a God above the one true living God, because ultimately when we stand before him, who did you serve? Amen. Be blessed. And I will see you next time as we get into the 19th chapter of Revelation and you start to see the glory of God be fulfilled.